aid and also started training the local people, the Furka, is as, as our force to start the war off and it took us um, from 1970 and 1971 we actually kicked off the war, want for a better word, and uh, it went on from there. It was a people's war. It was and the a people of Oman. The Battle of Mirbat, which was uh, 9 versus 400. Yes, uh, at the time you don't think that, but um, when you look back now at history, if they would have won that day, uh, they, they were in a good position to probably take the next town, which is Taka, and then Salala, and then the communists would have had a, a good... The helicopter was shot up, and I was shot at, and I came back then, and by the time I reached the house again, it was filling up with wounded. The townspeople were bringing in wounded, both enemy and locals. And so I had a task on, uh, my first task was to make sure everybody was okay. And that went on for, I mean, time stands still in battles like that, you know. Uh, that went on for another hour. And then I was told uh, another helicopter was going to come in. So I went down and got a better position to bring it in so it had protection for the machine guns. And to my utter surprise, on my Sabi, which is an emergency beacon radio, uh, a jet contacted me and was asking me for targets. Mm. So I'd never done that course before, so a quick thinking, good job I watched all these American movies. Mm. I just told them that the enemy were 100 yards in closing, and I repeated it twice. And I told the pilots, be aware there was machine so, guns. So, but, but you were at risk, of, I mean, you were obviously at risk all the time, all through this, but yes, you, yes, you were yes. frankly lucky to get out of there alive. We all were. We all were. It, we were nine people there working independently because our numbers, you know. I mean, somebody yeah. got you out of a pickle, though, didn't they? I mean, that just to get this it, 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 What I loved about the book, actually, is that there's that compassionate element that we don't always associate, especially with special forces chat. But there is a, a moment where you talk about the, 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 the moment that you met uh, one of the opposition, as it were, who'd also lost friends and family, and there yeah. was a, you had a bonding moment. Towards the end of the battle, obviously, uh, we got three prisoners were handed to us, and I took them upstairs to interrogate them, a gentle interrogation. And these guys were hungry, starving, they were out of the game. And uh, two of them spoke perfect English, and I got them a, a cup of tea each, and a cigarette each, and then I opened a tin of cheese, processed cheese, and I gave them each a piece of cheese. The last guy I gave a piece of cheese to, he, our hands kind of touched, you know, and, uh, and we looked at each other and he said in perfect English to me, I'll never forget, he said, have you lost anybody today? And I said, yes, I've lost a friend and maybe two. And I, I said the same question back to him. I said, have you lost anybody? And he said, I've lost a brother and a cousin. And I don't mind admitting it, it, it just swelled up inside and we both had tears and it, it was a, a strange thing, ten minutes before we were trying to kill each other and then we were united in our grief. Mm. Yeah. And as ever, yes, the, and the circle continues of course, they, uh, no time to ask you about the parallels with Libya today, but um, it's fascinating and I'm glad that you've been able to write about the Battle of Mirbat and uh, tell us about your role in it. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And you can read uh, the accounts of the Battle of Mirbat in Roger and Richard's book, SAS Operation Storm, which is available now. Okay.